Good morning. Good morning. A beautiful morning, a delight uh, to be in the Lord's house. A number of things to highlight today, so hopefully everybody's ears are perked up. Extravaganzas a couple weeks away. We still need help at the hamburger stand. Uh, it's really easy work. You just come and help serve. Uh, there's two hour shifts available. The sign up sheet uh, is at the back of the church. Um, we did hire a new teacher at school. Her name is Miss Lauren Peterson. Uh, she will be getting this fall in our new, at 7th and 8th grade. We're going to be painting some classrooms this week. Four of the five will get painted. Uh, next Saturday will be a work day at school. Uh, if you can come and help between 8 and noon, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, they're also doing a, a fundraiser. Uh, they're selling mumps uh, from Gertens. They're beautiful. Uh, there'll be somebody at the back of church uh, taking orders. Those will be delivered on the 22nd of September. Yes, uh, just in time to put on your porch for fall. Uh, please uh, help support that. That will help uh, support the, the salaries at the school. Uh, and then read through the newsletter that is in your boxes uh, that got done this week, uh, especially to find out more information. The best of the worst will be the end of September as well. Um, I think that's all I have. This was found in church somewhere. If anybody's missing a handicap placard, uh, otherwise we'll sell it to the highest bidder who wants to use it. Um, I don't know if it was left at the funeral last week or a week and a half ago, but it was in the back uh, in the sacristy. Uh, it's been there for about a week now. So uh, if you're missing that, let me know. We'll, we'll get it to you. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Our order of service today will be divine service setting three as we uh, gather together once again at the Lord's table. Uh, our first hymn is 648, Glorious Things of You Are Spoken, 648, uh, Blessings as we worship today.
Let us stand together as we continue with our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly demand that you deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your promised mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings of death. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly the intro. With upright heart he shepherded them. He commanded the skies above. And he rained down on them manna to eat. Man ate of the bread of angels. With upright heart he shepherded them. Lord. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus, as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah, uh, Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I'm about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. And then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine, flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, 
makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we sing the Alleluia verse and hear the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him, whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. May be seated for our next hymn, 918. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, 918.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we're still in John chapter 6, that whole story around the the feeding of the the 5,000. And and today, you think Jesus would have been happy, right? That the people were coming after him, right? They were were chasing him down. Did you catch that? They, They woke up that next morning after Jesus had fed them, right? Five loaves, two fish, over 5,000 people, and they woke up and he wasn't there. And so they go looking for him, realizing that he had gone to the other side of the sea. They even sail across the Sea of Galilee to find him. Now, that took some effort, crossing the sea, chasing after Jesus. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, apparently not. Not. For when they they found Jesus and tried to figure out how and when he got there, right? They only had one boat the day before. They saw Jesus send his disciples in the boat, and he didn't go with them. And Jesus doesn't seem particularly too excited or happy to see them, right? He doesn't greet them, commend them for coming after him, right? This is kind of what he says, right? You just came because you wanted more food, right? No, there's more, more important things going on here. Yeah, that, yesterday that was just a sign. I'm here not to fill your stomachs, but to fill your souls. I'm here to provide bread for this, not this life, but for eternal life. I'm the son of man, he tells them. Right? You came all the way across that sea for food that perishes. Would you have come so far and if I hadn't fed you? Would you have come that far just for my teaching? You should be working for food that does not perish. Food that doesn't leave you hungry the next day. Right? Stop! Repent! Think about that. Is chasing after Jesus necessarily a good thing if you're chasing him for the wrong reasons? Jesus gives good things for this world and for this life. And yes, he's happy to do it. Right? When the disciples were handing out all that bread and fish, can you imagine the look on Jesus' face? Happiness, delight, joy. Yeah, sure. Right? Here's the good shepherd caring for his sheep, lovingly doing that. He loves giving gifts. But if we love the gifts more than the giver, if we chase after the gifts more than the giver, if our focus is on the gifts more than the giver, then the gifts aren't good anymore. Those gifts then become idols, false gods. Those things that we live for. Think about it this morning. What are you willing to cross the sea for? If you think about it for a bit, you may not like the answers that you come up with. What are you willing to cross the sea for? Roads that seem too treacherous to drive to church are are willingly braved other times to go to sporting events or to parties. Checks that look so big going into the offering are easily written for other things. Times that seem in short supply to read God's word and come to him in prayer is is lavished on, on television and computer games, Facebook Twitter, music, movies, which is to say we we can't do those other things. We can, and there's nothing wrong with them. Our Lord gives us those things in this world to enjoy. We don't have to be monks, and yet it's quite sobering, isn't it? Thinking about our lives and how sometimes things just get out of place when we're willing to cross the sea for the gifts but not cross the sea for the giver of those gifts we do it 
Our sinful nature will always go after and cling to the things of this world. It will always cling to the gifts rather than the giver. And when it does, as it did that day in Capernaum, we too need to hear Jesus' rebuke. We too need to repent. Now in the story, at this point, the people seemed willing to do so, right? Willing to repent. Right? They didn't turn around and walk away from Jesus after he rebukes them. When he isn't apparently going to produce more bread, right? They stay and, and ask of him. They want to learn more. So they say, okay, Jesus, you told us not to work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life. How do we do that? What must we do to be doing the works of God? Now, perhaps the answer they expected and what we might expect to hear is, well, you know, the Ten Commandments, right? What must we do? Love God, love your neighbor, pray, read your Bible, go to church, honor your father and mother, don't murder, lead sexually pure and decent lives, don't steal, don't lie, don't covet what your neighbor has. But no, Jesus doesn't say that. Because doing those things cannot get you eternal life. Doing those things are good and, and they are the way we should live, but they cannot atone for the sins that you've already done and which you've already produced the death you're going to die. Even if we could somehow be doing them perfectly now. When it comes to eternal life, th those aren't the answer. So Jesus tells them, believe in him the Father has sent. Or, in other words, put your faith not in yourselves and what you can do, but in the one who was sent, not across a sea, but the one who was sent across time and space from heaven to earth to provide eternal life. Who has sent to do the things that you cannot do. Who was sent to forgive your sins. Who was sent to conquer death. Put all your chips in his basket. I mean if you're going to cross the sea. Cross it to receive those things. Those promises from him. Not for food that perishes. Not for food that's here today and gone tomorrow. Okay they say. Show us a sign then, right? Can, can you imagine that scene? Now, we don't know how many people were there, but, but it was a crowd. And as crowds do, they were probably all shouting different things at different times. Imagine one guy over here shouting, show us a sign. And then another one, yeah, what work will you perform? And then from somewhere in the back, hey, our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, the implication being, yeah, your bread was pretty good. But you just gave us earthly bread. You're talking about food that perishes. That's why we're back for more. If you're talking greater bread, give us a greater sign. Well, Jesus had really just done a sign. Right? The same God who rained bread from heaven, as we heard in that Old Testament reading from Exodus, is the same God who just fed those 5,000. Right? A little different procedure, but it was the same gift, the same God. But no, they were blind. They couldn't see how great that was or what it meant. Right? They wanted to see something far more spectacular in order to believe what Jesus was saying. And now again, that, that trap's easy for us to fall into too, right? The, the thinking, the more spectacular, the, the more true, the, the bigger, the better. But it, it's not always so. Paul tells us today in Ephesians, when Jesus ascended, he gave gifts to men. What are those gifts? He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the peach the pastors and teachers. He gave them these people, Paul goes on to say, to equip the saints, 
to do the work of the ministry to build up the body of Christ. And to do that through preaching, through the gifts of baptism, the Lord's Supper, and through these, the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. And Paul goes on to say, no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. In other words, so that we stop crossing the sea for the other things that really don't matter. That we stop thinking and say, huh. Oh. Stop saying, hum. Oh. And to his gifts and wishing for something far more exciting and more spectacular. That, that we stop chasing so hard after the things that the world and maybe our sinful nature say are important and the things that we need and realize, realize there's more our Lord has for us. That really, he, what he wants to give us is himself. And that's what Jesus finally says. I am the bread of life. I am the one sent from God. I am the one who crossed time and space. I am the one sent to give you eternal life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. That's not just a statement. That's a promise. Enjoy the things of this world, yes. But when you get them and still find that there's something missing, that, that there's a hunger and a thirst, that, that all the things of this world seem unable to satisfy or to quench, you'll find it in him. And he comes to give himself to you, to, to fill you with himself. And, and far longer than 40 years Israel spent in the wilderness, no, he gives it for an eternity. And the sign he did for that was the sign of Jonah we heard about last week, right? Swallowed up, not by a fish, but swallowed up by death. Your death, my death. And on the third day, rose again from the dead. Death could not hold the perfect, innocent one. They asked, what, what sign will you do that we may believe? That's the sign. Death and resurrection. The one who descended into death is now ascended into life. And because he has, so will you. So will you. And so he comes again today. He, he comes again today filling you with his word, filling you with his forgiveness, filling you Filling this bread and wine with his very body and blood that you feed on him and have a greater gift. That you feed on him and, and have not just life, but eternal life. If Moses were here today, he would say, this, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. And then St. Paul would add that, that with that we may grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. That we grow. That we grow in his mercy. That we grow in his grace. That we grow in his forgiveness and that we grow in his life. That we grow in prayer. That we grow in his word. That we grow in faith. That we grow in him. And so that we grow together. One body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. Here, here is the bread of life that produces such a life. So if you're going to cross the sea, cross the sea for this. Imperishable bread for an imperishable life. So come, come, Jesus says, and feast, feast on him. Come, Jesus says, and live. Indeed, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we sing the offertory. <clears throat> pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, as you provided for the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness to the land you had promised, give us confidence to trust in your promises and to look to your hand to provide all that we need for this life and for the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Master of the vineyard, sustain those who you send into your harvest. Give your blessing to pastors, teachers, Christian leaders, and all who abide in your word, that they would be enabled to work diligently and faithfully for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all, hear our prayers for the hungry and the homeless. Provide for them not only bread to satisfy their hunger, but above all, the true bread of life, Jesus Christ, who alone can fill and satisfy every need of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Show your mercy to the sick and to the hospitalized. We pray especially this day for Ashley, Harlan, Jim, Luann, Marlene, Marvin, Al, Harold, Ray, Roman, and Verona. Provide doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals to care for those who need health and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and giver of all life, we thank you for all the mercies that you granted to Kent and to Gerald during their earthly lives, especially for calling them to faith. Comfort the survivors who mourn their deaths with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Keep us mindful that we are mortal so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, sustain the proper use of the sacraments among us, that your church would continue to be blessed with your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation through the waters of holy baptism and through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We may be seated now as we gather our offerings to the Lord.
We continue with the preface as we prepare to come to the Lord's table this day. Let us stand together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, together. Our Father, Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us stand together as we continue with the note of the Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Closing him 633 at the Lamb's High Feast, we sing 633. 